Hello, I'm Trudy Friend. I'd like in this programme to show you how to paint the long hair of a donkey. I always start with animals with the eye. So I've mixed up my colours beforehand and chosen roughly the colour range I want for this animal. And I'm just going to use one of the darker colours to start with the eye. I don't always put the darkest colour on straight away, so even though it'll be quite a dark eye when I've finished, I might do it light to start with just so that I can get the shape of it right. It is a good idea not to go too dark too soon. I've used French ultramarine a lot, which means that it's sinking to the bottom, so every time I want to use the colour with French ultramarine in it, I will mix it thoroughly before I take it out of the palette. So I'm looking now at the shape of the eye and doing the downward curve to start with, having regard, of course, to the fact that I've got long hair overlapping that eye. So I'm going to cut up into some of these long hair strands that come over the eye, and I do that unevenly with a flick-up stroke just so that we've got some interest around that area. And I'm doing it very carefully because the eyes are the most important. Once I get going, I can speed up, but I want to get this shape correct. So there's his little eye in place, and I'll compare it with the other one, of which I see a small amount over here. So I'll just gently put that in. This is the advantage of a good drawing to start with. I had the drawing just as I wanted it, and as I've put it down with my brush in the light painting version, I now can follow it exactly. So I've got the other eye in on the other side. And once I look at the eyes, I'm looking at now the darker area that falls down beneath it. So I'm just bringing that round a little bit more and bringing the dark in underneath. And the way it comes down into the long nose and just join some of the longer hair there and then cut in at the top and get some of the long strands coming over here. So I've just got it in place and a little bit on the other side, the indentation there, just to line it up. The next thing I'm going to do is go to the top of the ear. I'm taking a slightly browner mix. I've mixed a little bit of burnt umber in with my blue there. And these are pull down strokes, quite swiftly applied but at different angles, fanning them in places, pulling them in and coming around the other side and pulling it down. I want to get that lovely rough edge to the donkey's hair and then pull it down into the main area, which is a little bit lighter before it goes down to the central area in the ear, which is a richer dark color. There's a little bit of light up there. So I'm just taking that round and down into there. A little bit more water to help that blend. and tuck that in. Underneath this light bit, there's another dark here, and I'm pulling it down at this point so that the light hair's coming in front of the dark behind, and then I'm tick and flicking here and turning the brush to start on this other arrangement of hair, which is quite uneven. And then there's the other side of the ear here, and behind that, the mane is flicking up. So I've got that ear established. Now I'm looking at the other one, which is a slightly different angle. So again, pull down strokes, round, and pull down again, allowing those light hairs to come from behind over the darker ones. And then again, cutting in behind these darker ones and into a nice dark there. So we've got that lovely feeling of that hair curving. There's a light bit here before a dark edge, so I'll just get that dark edge in, pull down a little more. All this is just undercoat. I'm just positioning things at the moment, and I can darken it up later with my overlays of paint. I've got a little bit of dark in here, and there the ears in place. Now it's interesting when you come to the center of an area like this, how we can use similar strokes to foliage. And I use a crisscross stroke, for some of the larger leafed foliage on trees. Same sort of application here. And I'm going to crisscross because that'll give some interest to those hairs and give some sharp edges. And I'm not putting too much pressure on the brush at the moment. I'm what I refer to as dancing with my brush, lightly tripping across. What I'd like to demonstrate also is that by blotting, I can knock it back. I can get the tone to go back. And I often put my initial tone on quite dark, which enables me to see clearly what I'm doing. And then I think, well, OK, that's in position. Now I'll knock it back. Sometimes if you just touch something that's still slightly wet, you get a little bit of blending. Other times, once it's dry, you can cut in and get a crisp edge to it. 
So I'm just taking round that little bit on his forehead, which is always the fluffiest bit on these animals. And over to the other side. Notice how when I work, I am dancing about across the page because what I want to do is get the feel of the whole. I don't want to just start from one part and work through in case even my application may have changed by the time I get to the other end. So I like to dance all over the place and keep adding water to my mix so that it doesn't dry out and get too concentrated. So I'm feeling my way now around his neck a bit. Again, all at different angles with the brush and having regard for anything light that's going to come in front. Getting behind here on this, under his chin and his cheek. And when I get down to these lower areas, I usually wet the paper and blend out so that I don't have it too much of a sudden stop at the bottom. This surface, which is one of my favorites, is a little bit dry and sometimes it's nice to get an undercoat of water because once you apply your next coat, it will go on in a different way. So I'm just getting that a little bit loosened up underneath. Now I'm going back to this part here. You notice I'm keeping it very much to neutral colors at the moment because I can always glaze over the top with brighter colors in certain areas if I want to. So I'm coming away there, looking at this long hair and the way it comes out on his cheek. And at the moment I'm just doing pull down strokes and really it's cutting in behind the lights all the time, allowing the lights to come over and into that dark area. And again, underneath here, a little bit more dark there. And there is a halo along here, or light edge along that lower cheek. So I've left that bit. And I'm going to mix up and just do a little drop in. So I'm just going to touch there and let it blend out a bit and then pull down and cut in again behind this area. And we've got some little light hairs coming away from his muzzle. So I'll put little pull down strokes there to allow those light hairs to come. And then we're down to his lower lip. Now on the lower lip, you can see how it's going on much smoother there because I've got it already wet. And this is what happens, it will blend out much easier. This lower lip is dark underneath. And because it's dark, I don't want the shadow to be behind it because it won't show up. So what I'm doing is blending away and getting it to go lighter. And then when I paint that lower lip in, I can do it dark. I'm going to go back over his forehead now. And we've got some darks in here and over here. Pulling down the dark behind there. It's quite dark under here. And then it comes out and in again. And over here, we're joining some of these longer hairs that come from the ear. They are quite long. They go right down to there, actually. And the other side, we don't see them all. They tuck in behind that part that's jutting out and probably come out more there. But they are much more behind it. Now, as I'm painting this, I'm really feeling what it would be like to put my hand on that forehead. So my brush is going round in a way that is feeling the form, the direction. And under here we have another dark. And a little bit more dark back here. On his mane. A little bit of dark shadow there. This is darker in here, so I'll just fill it in a little bit there, because that's not white paper. Also a bit more on that side. So I'll, I'll fill in a little bit there, and there's a shadow back there, and under there. And I'm going to pull it down a bit. I'm going to go now for a little bit of a lighter brown. Again, I want it very dilute, just to lighten up this bit here. and a little bit on the other side, because some of this bit is a little bit yellowy. And let the white paper stay at the edge there. And we have some shadow here, and cutting up into that lighter area that comes across it. And it's getting darker down here. And there's an indentation there that comes out and the hair comes away from the jaw under here. So 
So I'm pulling those back in. Be a bit of shadow under there. And we have the hair coming away from a central area here. It's fanning out a bit as it finds its way down there. And under here is a tone where the hair has overlapped and causing a shadow. So I'll just come away for that. And there's a darker tone there. I'm thinking that I might in a minute want some larger brush strokes here and I'll go over to a larger brush but for the moment while I've got this one I'm going to look at the nostrils and just darken that up. Here I'm looking for angles, one stroke going across there, coming out like that, bringing the nostril towards me, then taking it back in like that and round and the other one is slightly different because of the angle at which we see it and I'm doing very simple strokes and having regard for my drawing very much here and the way the drawing follows the form. And underneath here we want some nice dark, so I'm pulling that down and squiggling it along a bit because there's a dark tone. He's got some markings there that are, are grey. And then feeling my way back round there. And I want a little bit of light edge for the reflected light. I'm going to diffuse this a bit. And just take it around there a bit softer and softly around there. 